Hey guys, how's it going? Hope you're having an awesome day. I got some free time right now, so I figured I'd put a video together for you guys showing you how to fix a leaking Shimano brake lever. This is quite a common problem. A lot of people have this issue, and it's a pretty easy fix. So I'm talking about the leaking that happens in this area right here, and you'll just see residue all over here. It's caused by the seal inside. So what we need to do is get in there and change it. So let's do it. So on this M9000, the first thing you want to do is right here on the lever, there is a little rubber grommet that you want to pull out with a, with a pick. And it gives access to a two millimeter set screw. And loosen it about three turns and leave it in there. Next step, you want to take this pin out. So you push it from the bottom. If it doesn't want to come out, it means that you need to loosen this a little bit more. A few more turns. Try again. There it goes. So pull that pin out of there. Put it aside. So the next step is tightening this set screw here on the lever. And when you tighten it, it pulls the lever outwards. So the way I like to do it is I like to remove the lever from the handlebar first. That way you get clear access to it. So to get these Shimano levers to open, sometimes you gotta press some pin in this hole here so that it allows it to open, just like that. So now that it's loose, it's gonna be flopping all over the place. So what I like to do is just tape it on the handlebar like that. So as you can see, you put some tape there, it keeps the lever upwards so it doesn't leak out while you're repairing it and it gives you clear access to that set screw. So now we just want to tighten this set screw right here. And you just keep tightening it until it let her, that lever comes completely out. There we go. So you're gonna need some C-clip pliers, the kind that are meant for internal C-clips. As you can see in there, that's the C-clip we need to get out. It's quite a tight fit, especially for the pair I have. It might be better to get the 90 degree ones that come in on an angle like this to get it out. But I'm going to have to go in head first this way so you won't be able to see me do it. And it's quite tricky. Also if it helps you can use a flathead screwdriver to rotate the C-clips to get the holes in a better position. Okay I got the C-clip off. So this is what comes out of there. You got your C-clip. Underneath the C-clip is a washer. And then you have this piece here at the ball on the end. So now we need to pull out the piston. So the piston should come out pretty easily. You should just be able to get a pair of pliers and pull it out. Just like that. So what's left in there now is just the spring, which you can just leave in there. And you're gonna to wanna to clean this whole area up without getting any of the dirt inside of that hole if you can. Probably wanna use something like a Q-tip. This here is the piston. So when you pull on your lever, pushes the rod this way and this moves in this way. And these seals on here are called skirt seals. And the way they work is when it presses in, oil fills the gap of these seals and expands them, which puts pressure on the sidewalls. So as you can see the way these seals are, I don't know if I can show it on camera too well, but you can see it's, it's got an opening in there. And when you press it, that opening fills with oil and spreads it out and tightens it. So for the front seal, that's exactly what you want. But for some reason Shimano uses a skirt seal on the rear as well. And that's where the issue is. Skirt seals don't seal as well if there's not pressure being applied. So as your lever is sitting there and you're not pulling it, oil tends to find its way around this skirt seal. So what we're going to do is we're going to switch out the skirt seal 
for O-rings. These are the O-rings I ordered online. These are the best I could find. I did a lot of trial and error with this, and these are the best size O-ring for the job. They're 10 by 5 by 2.5, so it's got an outer diameter of 10 mil, inner diameter of 5 millimeter, and it's 2.5 millimeter thick. Um, I'm gonna leave a link in the description to these exact ones I bought so that there's no confusion. Okay, so what you want to do is remove this rear skirt seal. And what I use is this dental pick that has a nice end on it. It's not sharp at all. And it's easy to dig in and get these kind of seals out. So what I do is basically just get it underneath it. And pull it up. The reason the o-ring has to be a specific size is because if it's even a little bit too big it puts too much resistance on the movement of the piston and the return spring that's inside of the lever won't have enough force to push it back out when you press it in so you gotta have the perfect size if you go too small it's just gonna leak so let's go ahead and put this o-ring on here So I found another o-ring that I'll put over top and it'll, it'll fit between these two and it's just going to fill the gap. It's not going to be as big as this o-ring so it's not going to do any of the sealing but it's going to keep this o-ring in its position better. So you can see like that. I'm also going to leave a link in the description of where to get this o-ring. This one is 2 mil thick with 9 mil outer diameter and a 5 mil inner diameter. So let's go ahead and get it on there. There we go. So as you can see, it's just about on. I'm gonna go ahead and push it in its place a little better so that it's not as big as the brown O-ring. Now you can see that it fits in there nicely. It's a little smaller than the bigger o-ring so it doesn't touch the walls but it helps support this bigger o-ring in position a lot better so that's what it should look like when it's ready to put back in I should also note that if you put this in with an o-ring a little too big and it's too tight and the spring doesn't have enough force to push it back out for you and it's stuck in there the only way you can really get it out is with like a pick like this and what you'll do is you'll push it in on the wall here and dig it into the plastic and pull it out. Okay, make sure it's all clean in there now. You see the springs in there? Now we're gonna wanna put our piston back in. Actually, I forgot to note, when pushing the piston back in, you wanna take this top bleed bolt off. Just got the bleed bolt off. Let's give it another little push here. Now it's fully seated inside. It's gonna make it a lot easier to get the C-clip back on. So that's what you want it to look like when you go to push it back in. You have your washer followed by your C-clip. It also helps to put a little bit of grease on that ball. Just go ahead and get that on. I like to use an Allen key to help keep pressure on that bolt while I try to get that C-clip back in place. Now you want to use your pliers again. Now I'm going to tell you, this part's tricky and I can't really show it on camera, but I'm just giving you the steps. You're going to have to get in there and get that C-clip closed and pushed into place. And you want to make sure it's snapped into place all the way around. Sometimes it helps to just use a flathead screwdriver and push it all the way around to help it snap into place. So there you go. I managed to get it in with just a flathead screwdriver. Just kind of put one end in and pry it on the other end till it pushed into place. Okay, now we're done the hardest part. Let's just put the lever back on now. Remember, loosen it to get it to move in. Once you get it a certain distance, we want to put the pin back in here now. So add just a little bit of grease to this pin before you put it back in. 
There you go. Go ahead and tighten that two mil set screw. Doesn't have to be too tight, just enough. Okay, we're almost done. Now we just wanna get this back on the handlebar mounted. Get your plastic piece back in there. Get your bolt back in there. Okay, now we just go do the final thing, which is bleed it. So get your funnel on there. Add a tiny bit of fluid. You don't need too much. Something like that. Now we're just gonna pull the lever until you stop seeing bubbles coming out. You can tap on your hoses, tap on the lever. Okay, I'm not noticing any more bubbles, so what we're gonna do is remove this funnel now. Go ahead and get your top screw back on there. So go ahead and clean this all up with some isopropyl and a rag. Make sure there's no residue left behind. So hopefully that helped a bunch of you out there. It's quite a lot of effort that goes into setting up camera and stuff for making a video like this. So hopefully my efforts are helping you out and if you want to help me back, just consider subscribing to my channel or giving me a thumbs up. And if you have any questions at all, just leave them down in the comments below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Have an awesome day guys. Cheers.